It's time for Cutting Edge Consciousness with Freeman Michaels and Barnett Bain. Thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. Good moment. Welcome to Cutting Edge Consciousness. Freeman Michaels here. With Barnett Bain. Good moment to you too, Freeman, and uh, to all our listeners. It's a rough day in uh, Southern California. Yeah. Fire season, <coughs> Santa it's, Ana uh, conditions. Yeah. And the uh, sky is roiling uh, with uh, orange l- and dark light. Yeah. So for a clear day, there's a whole lot of uh, what would presumably be clouds, but they're not. It's smoke. And uh, of course, for those of you listening, uh, we tape Thursday mornings, and uh, many of our listeners listen on KVTA uh, 1590 on Sunday evenings. So uh, this is probably now old news, but uh, better be old news. Uh, con- yeah, the con- um, Conejo, the Conejo fire is uh, is raging right now. I drove past it actually this morning. It was that word intense, you know. Whoa! It was uh, my the whole. You know the the heat coming off of it. I was only maybe fifty, fifty feet or so uh, from burning bushes. I mean, really, they've let it burn all the way to the highway, and they just you know they just cordoned off a few lanes, and and they're letting all of the northbound traffic go through, but the southbound traffic is 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 a mess. So um, intense, you say. Intense. That's pretty interesting. So, yeah. Um, it is intense. I presume from the way you're speaking about it, because it brought you fully, fully present as 100%. to the uh, the heat and to the dynamism of the energy and the animism of the space. Totally, and you were uh, not ruminating about the future, nope. nor were you rehashing the past. So you were fully in the present tense, in tense. <coughs> you were in the tense. Yeah, and so what happens in that moment? Um, I love that language, in tense. It brings us into the present tense. And, and I was very present and, um, y- you know, fully feeling. Um, mm-hmm. We've talked about the way feelings work and how if personally, if I can, you know, sort of separate, um, that's not the right word, if I can pull my feelings out of the scripts that I've attached them to, the sort of emotional scripts. In other words, if I have a feeling, oftentimes I associate it with something or I start going on an emotional ride, which mm-hmm. is kind of a script, we call them emotional patterns sometimes, mm-hmm. whatever. In the moment of that intensity, all kinds of feeling rushes up, but it's not attached to a story. It's just a, it's just a real, again, coming into the present moment. So did you have uh, an intensity of experience? Very you intense know, feelings. Feeling experience? Very intense feelings. And, and I mean, you talked about the heat. Yeah, the heat, and then just really my awareness. So everything becomes more uh, vivid. So again, the sky, just how much smoke there was. Is that a feeling? Um, the experience of it is a feeling. I'm expressing it in words right now, but being in it and kind of navigating it and moving through the smoke and coming out of the smoke and then these waves of sort of feeling. Um, it's a lot of excitement and a lot right, of... Right, obviously uh, adrenaline. A lot of um, but also gratitude, gratitude for being on the other side of it, like really feeling like, wow. And, and again, everything becomes more alive all the things that are important to me in my life and all the ways. So when you're in that experience, everything that's in in your life, I'm just, I'm curious because we're so rarely intense. Yeah. Um, And when we talk about intensity, Mm. we usually, I know my, when I think about intensity, I'm speaking about, um, the after a mass of intensity <laughs> the or thoughts beforehand. About it. <laughs> yes. You know, I'm so grateful for my life. But the reality is is you're feeling the heat of the flame. Yeah. And your body is alive with the exhilaration right. of uh, an experience that is new, novel, uh, very, very dramatic. Um, do we re- do we really think about the gratitude for your children or yeah, I mean, the, the in, in the moment, uh, is that really what's going on? Uh, well, so it is because getting through the experience, so driving through it. First of all, I was amazed we could, we were so close to it. I mean, again, it's one of those things. I'm I'm fairly certain that the freeway is cut off right now. I'm, <coughs> I can't imagine they're mm-hmm. letting people continue to go through. Mm-hmm. But again, I came through early in the morning and they hadn't yet. Um, but um, moving into this kind of aliveness, this kind of presence, there's so much. Uh, available in a moment of presence for me. There's so much that can be floating through my experience. And again, everything becomes very vivid. So it's like, you know, um, if you speed the frames up, 
you know, we use the, the movie analogy. Mm -hmm. It's like I can handle a faster m film. It's like it's moving in, 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 um, more data, more data, but not in a, an intellectual cerebral way, just the capacity to hold it, not organize it into, into a, a thought. That's why you say when we talk about it after the fact and we start organizing it, it loses the experience of it because now we're trying to make sense of it. In the moment, I can't make sense of that state. Like, I mean, I can't in words other than to say fully present, fully alive, lots of adrenaline, rushes of fear, rushes of, of sort of gratitude, like I'm okay, and, and this, you know. Well, that's a pretty articulate um, description mm. uh, of feeling, so I, I appreciate that. What I, what I always appreciate about being snapped into the present tense, I've spoken about it in terms of when I get sick. Whiplashed into the present tense. Yeah, no kidding. Usually. Is that there's a kind of humility, um, because I felt very vulnerable as I was driving uh, 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 through the firestorm, literally through the firestorm. I mean, again, I was only 50 or, or maybe 100 feet, I don't know, not very close. I could feel the heat through my car window and through my car door. Of the f of the flames, and and obviously the smoke is everywhere. You're you, you know you're, it, there's smoke all around the cars. You're you know you can see a certain distance ahead, but again it's just wacky you know mm. to be going through this experience, um, and then coming out of it this sort of humility like I survived, but I'm and, and and again grateful grateful for the experience grateful for the aliveness because I do think that. Um, we avoid aliveness. We, I avoid it. I, 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 the comfort of the, you know, the malaise of my life. I mean, I don't entirely because this show and our work is about, you know, is about not avoiding it, but finding ways to engage life in a more active way. Um, but this is one of those ones where something occurs and it's gripping, you know, and there's no, it wasn't my choice. I didn't say, yay, today let's go create a firestorm. Or maybe I did. Who knows? But the point is to be in the middle of that experience and come out of it brings me closer to myself in a particular way. It's a humility. It's a vulnerability. And mm -hmm. that I'm always really grateful for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's really beautifully said. This experience of um, being in our bodies, mm. in, our, in our elements, uh, outside of the comfort zone, that is uh, that is an intense an intense experience, and in lots of ways, I think it's beginning to become uh, the new normal. I'm not speaking with specifically to firestorms, right. but I am speaking to uh, opening to an awareness of um, the life, the the ever imagining beyond the way we have it socialized and tucked in and all structured, and so this um, this new normal. I kind of like that language, the new normal. I want to be a discoverer of the new normal. And we ha are very great, very blessed today to have a, um, a guide. Yeah. To have a, a somebody who is a, a masterful uh, guide who can shine a light and carve a path and make a trail into the new normal. Um, Jetta Mali is a internationally recognized uh, teacher, a uh, guide, who began uh, at the age of uh, 20. Let's do the math. That was back in 1987. <laughs> 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 on Women tend to resent it when you do the math. Yeah, the 20 years of um, working, studying uh, in Asia with um, some quite well-known figures, including... Um, HHDL. I just discovered that that is uh, His uh, Holiness the Dalai Lama. Mm. People keep sending me emails about the HHDL. Mm. I thought it was that's a, a good guy to I say. I thought it was with. like a FedEx survey. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> you and, get certain uh, information. <laughs> Lama Zopa Rinpoche and mm. some very, very wonderful, wonderful teachers that she has been blessed uh, to have as her guides, and she in turn is serves as a guide for many, many around the world is doing some extraordinary things, and I can personally attest um, to her gifts and uh, what a beautiful friend she is. And Jetta, thank you for joining us Yeah, this welcome, morning. welcome to the show. Yeah, my pleasure. Nice to be here. So I was discussing a little bit uh, about going through this firestorm, and it seems, Barnett was sort of speaking about a new normal. There seems to be a lot of intensity 
um, that has on one side a sort of catastrophic feeling and, and, and you know, definitely going through it, it felt apocalyptic in some ways. But on the other side, it is an opportunity to wake up, to become attuned to our physical environment. Um, you know, and this could be, uh, obviously that's a physical event, but let's just say uh, uh, the financial storms or, you know, whatever the storms are that sort of shock us in, in an intensity and bring us into the now and reprioritize, reorder and restructure the way that we're viewing our lives and, and, and our choices and so forth. And I know that this is a big part of your work is, I guess, the wakening up, wakening up, <laughs> the awakening process. So can, can we start there? Sure. Well, um, I think the key word that you mentioned is opportunity, because I think we we tend to view uh, nice things that happen to us as uh, pleasurable, and we tend to view unpleasant things that happen to us as, you know, some kind of disaster, something wrong there. But the, the way that um, I see it is it's an opportunity, like, and you ut- utilize that opportunity this morning on your drive to the studio. So the awakening process isn't so much about, uh, well, it's certainly not about seeking out disasters. <laughs> <We're gonna, laughs> but it, it's more about noticing the faculties that we've got, and you mentioned some of them, the ability to come into the present moment, noticing the faculties that we've got available to us as part of our design and using them differently. So we're not saying that we have to acquire a new part of us. We're simply utilizing parts of us that have been um, underused or not seen before. I love and it. that's what gives us that new experience and that's what welcomes in the new normal because the, the more that we do that, uh, the more that we integrate that new perception, that new way of seeing into our being and then and that's when it stays with us and that's the definition of transformation so you're saying that these abilities this experience of self has always been there that's that's what i heard you say that we that, and that we have to we have for varying degrees and uh, uh an unawareness about it yeah absolutely because the the design of existence is set it's a done deal um and it doesn't change. And that, and that sounds like, oh, well, that's not very inspiring, you know. If it's all done, it's all fixed. But it is the, the actual design of how existence is put together is fixed. And there's, there's nothing that can change it. Even existence can't change it. Um, but the, the nature of existence is so, is so malleable, so suggestible, that that's how we get to our temporary experience. So there's an eternal part of existence which is unchanging and ongoing and that that nature is the same for everybody and everything regardless of the life form and then there's a a temporary aspect which is our relationship to the eternal our attitude towards it our understanding of it our use of it our perception of it determines all of our relative temporary experiences and that's how we get the the vast range of diversity of experience because it's all of the different beings have that personal relationship to the eternal and the way that they view it or don't view it, the way they accept it or deny it, the way they work with it or inadvertently work against it gives us those ranges of experience that we say, oh, this is nice or that's not so nice. I I think what we're talking about is an evolving uh, context so, uh, you know, again, uh, oftentimes it takes the proverbial firestorm, as it were, in our lives mm-hmm. to sort of have this awakening experience. But what Barnett and, and you've been discussing is there's a new normal. In other words, there's a lot of folks, uh, and, and clearly our audience is included in this, who are um, connected to an evolving context, a way of being with what's showing up in our experience in a far more constructive way than perhaps we've been in the past. And it seems to be sort of an imperative of our times. Um, I don't know if that's accurate or not. I, 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 it just is, is true in my own life that, you know, what is showing up for me, there's, it's, it's, it's calling in me, again, resources that I may or may not be tapping into or have tapped into, but it's required in order to really respond and I am both, you know, um, 
engaged in the intensity of that experience and also simultaneously very grateful because it represents my own evolution, right? Mm -hmm. so, so I'm talking again about this evolving context where it's a new way of ordering and organizing what we're experiencing that up levels maybe the way we're engaged in our lives? Yeah, and what's evolving is our consciousness. So consciousness is our faculty to notice our experience, which you uh, were mentioning. Um, by going through the firestorm. So our ability to notice our experience is what evolves. And as our consciousness is able to start to incorporate um, higher and higher frequency states, it's able to add new ways of seeing, new perspectives to a situation that already exists. So that's what evolves. And that's what changes the context. It's, it's the consciousness which is evolving. And that's not moving just from state A to state B. It's a constant process. So it starts off in a slow frequency. And over time, we, um, we have um, situations and events and people in our lives that help us to stabilize that level of understanding. And as we master that, we then it ramps up and so we then start to learn lessons in a new frequency until we've got a handle on that and so on and so forth so every time we we kind of plateau we then begin the next round of our learning and that's the evolution of consciousness overall and we're all engaged in that whether we realize it or not so we are peeling back uh, the eyes of the heart to our slumbering sense of greatness Oh, I love that, oh. Barnett. <laughs> God, he sometimes just drops these bombs. Hey, can we chew on that for a minute? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit with this for a minute. When we come back, Barnett, we're going to repeat that because that is the... I don't think it can be done twice. We're going to have to have Jetta do it. All right, Jetta, good. So Jetta doesn't forget anything. Whatever we're going to do. <laughs> I love how it's, it's easy in, easy out. Like, Barnett will say something brilliant. I'll say, say it again. He goes, I don't know what God, I just said. Finished. Uh finished. Anyway, we're going to take a quick we're break. We're going to sell a car. We're going to be right back. <laughs> okay, stay with us here on Cutting Edge Consciousness. Welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness. Thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. We're so glad that you stayed with us. This is Barnett. I'm here with Freeman and Jetta Molly uh, on the line with us from uh, somewhere very, very green and probably moist in the south <laughs> of England. Uh, Jetta, is it very, very green and very moist? Where is Jetta? It's not raining, can you believe? It's not raining. <laughs> See, in the moment that Barnett says what he says, nope, you're wrong, Barnett. Um, but I love the idea that you're in this uh, lush environment um, of England. Yeah. We're here in sort of dry Southern California where there's plenty of firestorms. Um, before we went to break, Barnett, you dropped the bomb. Well, we were talking about our slumbering sense of greatness. Um, you there remembered. Are, That's so good. I did. I'm so you know proud what? Of I'll you. tell you why. Um, <laughs> I have spent um, not enough time, but ever, all the time that I spend with Jetta is always uh, fun, mm. alive, lots of laughing, mm. and lots of um, um, awakening to slumbering sense of my own more. Hmm. Um, you, you know what strikes me? I don't know you, Jenna. Moreness uh, attends least. her. Yeah, no, I, 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 but I pick up a very sweet sensibility. There's a sweetness. Um, anyhow, that's, that's my two cents. A sweetness. A sweet sensibility, yeah. Sweet. Hmm. Hmm. Delicious, sweet. Wow. Like, how, yummy. What do you think, Jetta? Sweet? Yeah, well, I could run it by my children, too. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, if you really want an accurate mirror, show you're right. Hands. The kids <laughs> are the probably the right place to go because they'll show you all kinds of stuff you hadn't thought of or hadn't considered. Yeah. Because they tend to be very present, you know? Yeah. Intense. They say when I laugh that I make them laugh, and so they've asked me not to laugh when their mouth is full with food or water because they end up spraying it everywhere. Yes. <laughs> So that was the request I had before I came on the line today. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that's so great. say hi to them. Um, I will. There are some very exciting things that you are um, doing. Uh, you're involved as a, uh, an advisor um, to governments, and you are working with um, 
what uh, I don't know whether Lynn Twist refers to them as this, or I refer to them to Lynn Twist uh, as uh, in this capacity uh, with the no the no bells. That's right. And um, N O B E L L E S. Um, so I know that you're involved with the uh, no bells too, and I think with Lynn, yeah. Well, Lynn and I have had um, you know known each other for quite a few years now, and um, so we. Um, we speak a lot about the things that she's facing and uh, the work that she's doing. Mm -hmm. My um, business has supported, uh, you know, Pachamama, and uh, for some time now. For and those of our listeners who are not aware of the Pachamama Alliance, uh, Jetta, would you like to? It's it's an organization that works with the uh, with indigenous uh, partners, mainly in Ecuador, but also in Peru and other places in South America. Um, to help them uh, retain uh, ownership of their land, their crucial lands in the um, Amazon rainforest to prevent deforestation, uh, oil interests and water interests and logging interests. Um, so um, the Pachamama Alliance is doing amazing things there. Well, one of the other things they do, though, is they also expose people uh, to some amazing, uh, this amazing tradition of these indigenous people. Um, lots of friends of ours have taken trips down there and experienced firsthand, which again is a glimpse of something that is innate, um, but that is often lost in modern times. In other words, the way that these uh, indigenous people relate to their physical environment and relate to life is a glimpse into something that's outside of our, our typical frame of reference. So the opportunity to see um, see the world from their perspective is is beyond valuable. Yeah, it's, um, I, I also went on one of those journeys and felt very much at home actually with them. They they talk about themselves as the Condor people, so they're, they're the indigenous people all around the planet who have um, a very direct and accessible relationship with nature, and so they take their cues for life. Uh, very much from direct and accessible um, spirituality. So the way that uh, nature shows up. Also, they have um, a dream culture so that they, they learn to navigate in unseen worlds as well as the seen manifest world. Um, and they refer to uh, the Western mindset, the developed nations, as the eagle people and those that tend to approach everything from... Um, an intellectual framework and they say that at this particular time in which we engage we need to utilize both aspects of our being rather than just have one or the other um, to be able to meet the stage of consciousness of those being after this right now but also to be able to solve some of the dilemmas that we're currently facing uh, from the transition that we're in mm. And so this is, you know, comes back very much to the work that I'm doing is not to suggest that we need to exit from our life or be remote or distant or disconnected from our body, our emotions and our mind. It's more to bring the other half of the picture, the fullness of spirit, into those faculties and thereby, as you said before, up-level or upgrade them. So our, our perception is not bound by those aspects of our being because when we only hold our perception in in the physical the emotional and the mental aspects of our being without uh the spiritual aspects and there's many different spiritual aspects it's not just one then we only have half the picture if we only have half the picture then we're always going to arrive at half-baked conclusions so it's kind of like trying to walk with one leg so we need to be able to incorporate all of our faculties right across the spectrum of our being to be able to uh, truly say that we're present and, and utilize all the faculties that we've been given just simply by the design of existence. One of the things that I admire about your work is that um, you are a uh, teacher of consciousness and an explorer. And you also are very, very practical about it as well. So you're, you're a member of the steering committee for the Global Coherence uh, Initiative. 
and they are doing very, very dramatic uh, work around the world, and I'd like you to speak a little bit about that. Sure. Well, the Global Coherence Initiative was started by um, HeartMath. So HeartMath has been pioneering um, heart research for the last 25 years, and and they had come to see that the heart had, you know, a major intuitive role in our being and that it actually um, had a greater role even than the brain in terms of um, the facilitation of our function. So they wanted to see if it was possible to um, measure uh, what they had found on an individual level and what they'd also I interestingly found on a societal level uh, when they'd worked with groups, with organizations, you know, large hospitals and, and, and companies, even the military, to see whether what kind of effect we were creating globally. And so the Global Coherence Initiative is, um, is set up to place a series of um, monitors, which were originally developed by NASA, by Elizabeth Rauschka at NASA. And this technology measures the Earth's electromagnetic bands. And what they found was that the Earth's electromagnetic bands, uh, the, the resonant coherent frequency of those bands was exactly the same resonant coherent frequency of uh, the heart. And they found there was a correlation between fluctuations in the field and fluctuations in the heart. So they extrapolated from this that as the heart was processing human emotions, so the Earth's electromagnetic bands were processing the collective emotion, so the collective unified field. And there was, uh, and because they were operating on the same frequency, it was like having, you know, basically an open telephone line between your being and uh, the planet. And so but we are both... Um, separate as individuals and connected is the incredibly dramatic, dramatic takeaway of some of this work that is so, uh, so, um, it's, it's so spectacularly uh, compelling, this data. Well, you know what's interesting? Because I want to point out a paradox. Uh, on this show, we love paradox. Um, the paradox of this show, the big paradox, is that Barnett and I are very mental guys, and we're talking all about this stuff in a mental way, but obviously it's it's a challenge, and this is what well, we started we the show with. We join hands a lot. We sing We Are the World. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we're getting down into all right, but our wait, hearts. Wait, wait, wait. I want to get, get this point. So what's brilliant about this, and I'm going back for a minute to what you were saying. Uh, I don't remember the term of the, I, I didn't really hear exactly the animal that the indigenous people associate with the Western world. The con, the, is it, the eagle. It's the eagle. Okay, yeah. so, but the, the concept, of course, is that we're caught up in our intellect and that there's, there's this whole conceptual relationship with our experience. And in versus, our memory. And our memory. <laughs> versus a really engaged sense. So what is paradoxical to me and kind of ironic and funny is that though I'm so behind Heart Mass work. I mean, we've had several people from Heart Math on here. We've talked about this in the past. It's brilliant. I, I love it. But again, we're we're trying to um, oh cater to the intellect, and it's funny because spiritual the spiritual traditions, the traditions of of, of many uh, native people. It, everything that we're talking about, how everything is interconnected, their response to that is something like, "Duh." And yet we in the Western world are setting up towers everywhere and we're going to do shoot this from space and then we'll really know. It's, I mean, it's okay. I, I love it. But again, it sort of goes back to this fundamental um, thing that we were sort of talking about here where it's not enough to be physically engaged in your life. It's not enough to have a mental construct of what's going on in your life. It's not enough to just feel it. There has to be a spiritual through line. There has to be a, 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 a connectivity of all these various components. And, and it's fine. We'll, 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 we'll prove it to everyone intellectually. Great. We'll find data so that you can to support. That's the, why she's called Jada. <laughs> the, simplest, <laughs> the, simplest of, of, uh, the simplest of premises. I mean, when you were saying, when I'm with these people, I feel at home, there's another duh in there like of course because there's no disconnection so while the mind is great we can see the dramatic imbalance of the western world that's right i mean and we can see that all of the structures 
you know, right down to our governmental policy, our social provision. It's all predicated on the understanding of the human being as a physical, emotional, and mental creature. When you start to incorporate that fourth element, the spiritual element, you start to see that the human being is not indeed separate, that it has energy fields that are interconnecting with other people's energy fields and the planet's energy fields simultaneously all the time. We realize that we have been, I use the word again, we have been underutilizing our being. We just simply haven't taken our consciousness into the areas of our being where we can access that. And one of the reasons is because it it doesn't make itself so obviously felt as the physical body, the emotional content, which comes in the form of strong sensations, or the mental thoughts, which are then uh, translated into sensations so that, to make our thoughts more tangible, to make them more tangibly present, noticeable. So the, the, um, the dimensions of our being um, that follow on from there are more subtle, and require um, a willingness and a trust that we just haven't yet uh, consistently exhibited in our history. But I think that is, you know, definitely our next step uh, as a humanity is to see if we can not only incorporate that individually, but we can start to, if it's so that we are much larger, if it's so that we have an eternal nature that doesn't change, doesn't get dinged or dented mm -hmm. by our day-to-day -day life, mm -hmm. then what ramifications does that have, the way we live, the way we interact with others, and the way that we organize ourselves as a race? So there's a lot, lot, lot of uh, questions still unanswered, and there's a lot of change still yet to come. Um, and we are just, at, you know, we're just at a station along the way. Well, if any of our listeners um, are attracted to a, a very real experience of um, the more of themselves that is slumbering and are attracted to having an experience of the greater peace, contentment, and freedom with Jedda, Molly. She's going to be in Northern California, at Woodside, California, June 13th to the 16th at an incredible retreat. I can attest to the power of that retreat. I have experienced it firsthand and uh, it is an awesome awesome experience and for more information about that uh, you can uh, go to our website at cutting edge consciousness or a uh, jet www dot it's uh, jet amali so it's my name jet amali.com so that's j e double d a h m a l i dot com perfect Jetta, thank you so much for spending time with us today. I mean, it's such a gift to have your sweet sensibility and your profound knowledge uh, here with us on this show. I love that, that you can get away with that. Cause sweet sensibility? I don't get that at all, but um, um, maybe I know too much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I do love you, Jetta, and I cannot wait to see you soon. And for those of you listening, stay tuned, because we'll be right back here on Cutting Edge Consciousness. Welcome back to Cutting Edge Consciousness, thought-provoking discussions and bold ideas from the edge of possibility. And we're back on Cutting Edge Consciousness. This is Barnett, and I'm here with Freeman. God, that was great. You know, this, this whole thing, um, it's so interesting because the slowing down of our uh, thought process or my thought process to be able to take in more, it's like we're consciously inhibiting the tendency to run ahead with our thoughts and regrounding in sort of fundamental stuff. I mean, it doesn't feel... Mm. Again, you know, going to being with the indigenous people and seeing the simplicity of how they live their lives and their attunement, if you will, to a higher frequency. I mean, even this language doesn't suffice, but just the whole way that they're tuned in and tapped in and how it takes a firestorm, you know, for us to kind of tune in and tap in. Um, and yet, you know, the, or, or, or a, a, a retreat a, with Jetamali. It's sketchy. 
it's a sketchy area. Mm. Uh, we we want to we want to uh, romanticize and nobleize other traditions. We want to romanticize and nobleize the East. We want right. to romanticize and nobleize the uh, traditional right. cultures. Everything in its place. Right. My center of consciousness is here, right here. Yeah. Uh, it's not there. I and agree with you. I, I agree with you completely. And, but um, yeah, go ahead. It's not about better or worse. No. But it is about uh, about a personal exploration of consciousness, and um, this is where it's happening. Um, yeah, no, this is I, where it's happening for for me. This yeah. is this is where my consciousness is expressed, and it is not helpful to me to measure any part of myself against any other. I'm part with you. Of, against I'm any with other you part of myself because I you. am those cultures yeah no and i totally not agree a, not as an intellectual thought no i am those cultures yeah and they and i have much to learn from those cultures as those cultures have much to learn from uh, from to us totally. so totally agree totally agree no yeah. listen i i'm not romanticizing and i know it, there's a big tendency to do that um what I'm offering is the opportunity to get outside of our own frame of reference or get more attuned to a, a part of our, 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 our experience that's maybe dormant that another culture is more tapped into. And all we do is we get a, I don't know a, that a broader... That, yeah. may or, that may or may not be true, but yeah. what, is, what is true mm -hmm. is that any, at any moment we can drop into our bodies mm. and feel the chi in it in the mm. room, any moment. Mm. Uh, I don't have to go to a cave uh, and meditate someplace. I don't have to go to a monastery and do that, nor do I have to go to an indigenous culture, except... But you can, and it's not to nobleize it. Listen, it's yes, not to you, nobleize you it. Absolutely, you can. You can. I mean, you listen, can. you go to a, a Jetamali retreat because you want to tap into something that she's very tapped into that provides an opportunity to expand, right? Yes. yes. That's it. So, it's, it is a, a, a matter, I think, of balance. It mm. is a matter of being very careful that we don't, uh, in, you know, we talked about the, uh, the growing awareness of our slumbering greatness. Right. When we diminish ourselves, That's we, right. are not, um, we are not tapping in to what is beautiful and great about ourselves. Yeah. Because there is only one thing going on there is always only one thing. And if we have an experience of being in the world, being more fully present, which involves not c shutting down my mental faculty, but right. adding on to it, right. and uh, experiencing more of myself, beginning first with my body and with my world. So uh, yeah, there's no, a firestorm going on. That is, in a real sense, more of the matter of the I, I'm not let's get a little esoteric here I am not in this body mm. my body is in me I am not in this world the world is in me we're flipping we're flipping our orientation more and more to take I uh, was to be able to more fully respond to this illusion of being separate. Yeah, and, and I'm so with you, and I'm grateful that you tied it back to that because, again, what I was starting with, I, you know, look, this is, this is part of my experience because now I'm really owning it, where uh, I like the sound bites. I like the storyline, and the storyline is we must awaken, and there's this, um, you know, there's this uh, collective need to it's be an, different. It's yeah, it's not helpful either because it's, well, so now I'll really cut mm. open and just reveal. Mm. So for me, how much does it organize around I get to be right, I get to be special, I get to be better? You know, <laughs> that is not something I love to reveal. But in some way, you know. That's so true. And the flip <laughs> side of that is we're defective and flawed and these other cultures have got it dialed in. Yeah, yeah, the same, that's the same thing. It's the same. Yeah, it's yeah, the it's the same thing. I agree completely. So again, you know, there's a up-leveling of my own life that comes when I own the reflection and 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 the the and I'm and I'm tracking in a self 
conscious way, not self-conscious how it's normally uh, used, but in a sense of my own experience, my own awareness, Mm -hmm. and there's a deepening. Part of what we try to do here, uh, or we are committed to doing, is go to our edge, like the propensity to track back to a conversation we've already had and or something that was cool yesterday doesn't get us to the edge. It's Mm -hmm. just a uh, comfort zone gig. And the same is true with these big drawings the, the drawing these big conclusions that that are so um, oh uh, enticing, you know. They're so, and we can get a lot of people to collude with us on the story of how we as a culture are asleep and we need to awaken. And da 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 da. And at some point, it's that's not the edge anymore. That's a boring old story. You really want to tell that? So when I'm talking about indigenous mm-hmm. people and the Pachamama Alliance, which is doing such great work, it's not. Uh, I hope to nobilize it and, and make me part of the special club that knows about higher consciousness. It's to, t- to recognize what can be reflected when I step outside of the, the comfort zone I've created for myself and view from a perspective that's, that, that, that is uh, expansive for me. That's, that's all. That's beautiful and yeah. so beautifully said. So beautifully said. Uh, Lynn Twist, who uh, is the founder and uh, runs the Pachamama Alliance, uh, is one of the more um, passionate and beautiful uh, people on the planet yeah. that I know. And the gift of knowing her is that I have an exposure to what it looks like to be fully committed, um, fully giving on a big adventure yeah. of service yeah. without any... Um, oh my God, it's all calamitous. It's, uh, she's just doing it the way, uh, I have a friend who's been visiting for a couple of days who's an incredible classical guitar player. Mm. So he's just playing that guitar for the joy of it. And, it, it and you, know what, you know what popped in my head? The yeah. conversation about the barista guy. Yes, yes. Mitch. You, wanna, you want to uh, review well, the, the barista guy? Sure, just that we were talking uh, on a previous show. This is going back show a, a long way. Stuart Emery. Yeah, and how uh, you had brought him to a uh, a coffee house in yeah. Malibu, and the man who runs the coffee house Mitch. is pa- Mitch is passionate about uh, coffee and the machine and the beans and where they come from, and it's very sensory and he's very into it, and just that way that he's so passionate and inspired and connected to what he's doing is enough. Because we can do these things out of a passion and a service and a contribution where I share my gifts yeah. with others, or I can dilute the power of that yeah. by uh, the degree to which, in addition to it, I have layers of war and struggle attached to it. Yeah, or so he's not yeah. giving, he can give his gifts and support, um, and support sustainable coffee plantations that's one thing, but if you're giving those gifts and you're at war with, uh, you, Bingo. Know, you got a real, du- uh, you make, you're vilifying people and you're making one side wrong and terrible and it, it, uh, it robs you of, it robs people of the joy of their gift and it shifts the frequency of the gift. And it's not required. I mean, really, folks, it, and I'll say it's this from my own life. To get, though. I'm still, yeah. I'm still. Uh, deeply, well, maybe I'm not deeply into it. I don't know where I am. Yeah, it. it's a great you point. You can't see your your velocity and your direction simultaneously. I think is the yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Law of uncertainty or something. Yeah, yeah. But um, I do know that I, I do know that I am still exploring. I'm still finding my way out of the weeds on that one. Yeah, no, it's it's great. It, it's interesting too because um, one of the things I'm really aware of is how I've ordered and organized. Um, something that's special or brilliant, you know, I've got a hierarchy in my conditioning where certain kinds of gifts are more special or more important than others. Mm -hmm. And they're not, they're just not. When it's a gift, it's a gift. When it feels really um, great, you know, I'm aligned with this, I'm behind it, it fires me up, whether it's making coffee or traveling to the rainforest and supporting indigenous people and owning their own, you know, uh, water rights and whatever rights, um, uh, oil, oil, gas, uh, lumber, yada, yada, yada. I mean, it, they're equally brilliant because whoever is engaged in it is engaged. And my uh, habitual uh, hierarching, hierarching, uh, del- delineating everything into this hierarchy of one's better than, or, or worse 
is the tyranny, right? That's not required. So whether we like talking on the radio, and that's our favorite thing to do, and we do it with gusto, and we talk about the stuff we love to talk about, or you know, whether I was president of the United States, is is is, is it doesn't matter. If I really want to be president, and that was what I was up to, and that was great and wonderful and inspiring, then that would be great. If it's not, then what am I doing? We have this uh, practice of forgiveness mm. uh, that I um, too often uh, fail to remember uh, that is a way for me to find uh, some, it's not closure, but some momentum out of that energy, out of the habit of that energy where I have dug into something. I forgive myself for doing it and uh, I can forgive others. And I'm, I'm sometimes more effective at it, and sometimes I'm less effective mm. at it, but it allows me to move forward. It's a kind of self-awareness. It's a really wonderful self-awareness without a firestorm. I mean, sometimes, 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 sometimes it takes a firestorm. A, yeah. Sometimes it's the firestorm, the firestorm, there are big gifts in the firestorm. There's yeah. gifts of presence, there's gifts of the intensity, there's a gifts of, a, of a, you become very aware of the vibrancy mm. uh, of the power of life and the complacency that um, that I am very familiar with sort of taking my life for granted in so mm. many ways. Mm. When there was a firestorm uh, a few years back that came right down to the road in front of my house and I'm on the roof of my house with a hose, well, I, I don't wish for that, but I was certainly alive. Yeah, and I did not take life for granted, and it wasn't simply about well, I'm going to lose, I might lose everything. That's a piece of it, but there's a, a there's a, an aliveness. There's yeah. A, well, I know we run out of time, and before we go, is that yes? That is that like uh, oh, it looks like a, a pizza chef that I know. <laughs> is, that's really fantastic. <laughs> I'm telling. Oh, I love. I zero? love when we get revealed for our own incompetence. Our, yes, this is our. Own, I was like, giving Barnett the signal. We have three minutes. Before the end of the show, and Barnett took it as cut, I took it cut as off. A, Let's go home cut, now. Was that it? <laughs> Three uh, minutes. We have a dear friend of the show. Oh, yes, good. Please uh, do that. Arjuna Ardash and his new novel, oh. which is really a wonderful, uh, wonderful spiritual tale called The Last Laugh. Um, it's, you know, there's not a lot of metaphysical literature around. And well, this is a novel. It's brilliant. It's a story. Is, this is a story, and yeah. it's really, really, really terrific. So I want to urge our listeners... Um, if they're readers, they might enjoy this. I'm even going to hold it up in front of our in-studio camera. The Last Laugh by Arjuna Ardaj. It is really, really good. You know, that, that show, too, with him, if you've not seen it, The Awakened Dreamer uh, that we did with uh, Arjuna is really spectacular. It's, good. it's a good oh, show. It's such a great He's show. He's a lucid liver. He's a lucid liver. That's and a lucid great. lucid pancreas and a lucid spleen. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Lip, liver. Yeah, all the organs <laughs> are lucid. <laughs> that, that was a lucid uh, stream of consciousness going from one <laughs> liver to another <laughs> liver. My kids do that all the time with words. You know, they, they're into the... The oh. hypertext. <laughs> right, 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 right. Well, no, they, they're spelling tests. So they have, you know, uh, the different... Uh, words that have different spellings and have different meanings, and that's been the theme for the last uh, I don't know month or so in Antonio's class. So our, our entire family is talking about different the different theirs and all the ways. Oh yeah, what do they call that? Homonyms. Yeah. Or... yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know how I knew that. Yeah, no, that was good. It's it's back in the back of my brain too, um, but that's very funny. So stream of consciousness. All right, well now we can say goodbye to our friends. Uh, we want to tell you that. Um, we, of course, is, are here every week, and we are grateful that you tune in. And we encourage you to share this with your friends. Uh, join us on Facebook. Um, join our community at cuttingedgeconsciousness.com and uh, become part of this community. Um, we, we, we just send you the RSS feed so you can see when the shows are going up or, or what's going on. Um, and uh, we're really grateful to do this. Go onto our website and sign up on our website. Don't we send them stuff? Well, we do. We just send them. Well, we send them uh, updates for the show. Well, we send them the other stuff too, right? We can. We can. <laughs> so if you go on, we'll send you some stuff. <laughs> That's good. What do we send email? them? I don't know. You. We'll work that out. We off should send them. We'll send you some stuff. Uh, all right. Good. Trust so, us. <laughs> Trust Freeman. <laughs> Trust. <laughs> we'll send you some. All stuff. All right. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>